Hi, and welcome to the Day Trading for Beginners podcast. This is episode 20, and in this episode, we are talking option Greeks explained for beginners. So this is going to be very much an introduction to the Greeks. We want to just talk about sort of what they are. We're not going to get into any specifics uh, regarding strategy or why you might you know, look to uh, analyze one Greek over another. Uh, we just want to kind of talk about what they are. So it's going to be sort of this continuation theme of learning about options. So uh, quite a few episodes back, we did our first uh, introduction to what options are. We talked about, you know, buying call options and put options. Then we had an episode about selling put options. Uh, in the previous episode, we had uh, we talked all about the pricing of options, and now we're sort of at uh, the stage to talk about the Greeks. And what I thought we would do is in the next uh, episode, we're going to learn about where to actually find options uh, on your options uh, chain within your brokerage account and how to make some uh, purchasing and selling options in a paper trading account. And that would kind of wrap up our uh, discussion here on options. And, you know, like always, you can download my six month blueprint that outlines everything I'm doing in the first uh, six months. You can find that in the show notes, or you can go to stokestrades.com forward slash blueprint. So we're going to finish up with options probably in the month of April, and then we're going to move on to technical uh, analysis. So let's jump right into it and talk about uh, the option Greeks. And again, this is going to be sort of an introduction to uh, the Greeks. Uh, I've used ChatGPT to help me uh, produce this podcast. I think it gives a really good analogy and example that we'll start with, and then we'll dive into more formal definitions of what these Greeks are. And then we're kind of going to the work, excuse me, we're kind of going to end uh, with an example uh, to sort of kind of help us kind of understand um, what these are. So again, beginner friendly uh, and uh, not really focused on strategy. So uh, the Greeks, what these are is you can kind of think of them as like special math rules that tell us how the price of an option might change in the future based on uh, different factors. So uh, beginners don't really need to worry about you know memorizing or understanding the co- the complex math behind uh, the Greeks right away. Uh, it's something I haven't even looked into. Uh, here we want to kind of just talk about um, the importance of just grasping what each Greek represents and then how it can influence option prices. So uh, you know think of the Greeks as you know, tools that give you insights into risk and potential price movements rather than you know formulas that you need to calculate on your own. And again, most trading platforms, and we're going to look into this in future episodes, especially on the YouTube channel, uh, are going to provide values uh, for you. So you can just focus on kind of interpreting them uh, to make informed trading decisions rather than worrying about how to calculate these math formulas. So you don't need to do that. Again, as you gain more experience, you might find it helpful to look into the mathematics behind uh, these Greeks and behind options. Uh, but again, it's not required uh, for this sort of introduction. So uh, what I've actually done here to start is I went and asked ChatGPT to explain the Greeks uh, to me in very simple terms uh, for beginners. And this is what it came up with. And I found that uh, using ChatGPT along with um, you know various finance blogs and YouTube channels has really helped me learn um, a lot of options. And it's a great tool if you're not using it as uh, something uh, to definitely consider. So here's what ChatGPT sort of explained uh, how they've explained options um, using sort of an analogy here uh, for simple terms for beginners. And then we'll dive deeper into more formal definitions. So uh, imagine you are a pilot and you're flying a plane. Now, to ensure a safe and efficient flight, you monitor several instruments that tell you how the plane is performing under current conditions. These instruments might include things like your altitude, your speed, direction, and fuel levels. Each of these readings help you you make decisions to reach your destination safely and on time. And I think we can all understand that we've, you know, many of us have been in planes. We understand that that sort of makes sense. Now, in the world of options trading, the Greeks serve a similar purpose to those flight instruments. But instead of measuring flight conditions, they measure how different factors affect the price of an option. So I think that's a great way to start uh, learning about options. So here's a simplified sort of breakdown 
of the most commonly used Greeks and how it relates to uh, this airplane analogy. So Delta, Delta is the first Greek and you know popular one uh, and one that's sort of very easy to understand. And you can think of Delta like the speedometer. So it tells you how fast the options price is expected to change as the price of the underlying stock moves up or down. So if Delta is high, then a small change in the stock price can cause a big change in the options price. So think of a Delta as the speedometer. And when the stock moves up, the Delta tells you how much the price of the option is going to move up. Uh, next, we have gamma. So gamma is like the acceleration gauge. It shows how quickly the speed of the options price change uh, is accelerating as the underlying stock price changes. So it uh, shows how quickly delta uh, is going to change. So it helps predict how delta will change as the stock price moves up. So as the stock price moves up, uh, delta uh, will tell you what the, happens to the option price. That's the speed. And then gamma is like the acceleration. So it's telling you how now the speed is going to change. So gamma affects delta. And then we have theta. And this is like the fuel gauge, uh, measuring time decay. So remember, options are sort of a wasting act asset. Uh, they will expire. Uh, and uh, as you know, each day sort of passes, the quote unquote fuel decreases. So the time value uh, decreases in the option. So theta tells you how much value the option loses each day that goes by. So that's what theta is. It's the time uh, decay. And then we have vega and rho. So vega measures sensitivity to volatility which uh, is similar to measuring measuring you know turbulence in the plane if you want to think of it that way so if the market is very turbulent so if it's very volatile then vega tells you how much the price of the option could change a higher vega means the option's price uh, is more sensitive to changes in volatility and we talked a lot about volatility and implied volatility in the previous uh, episode about option prices. So that could be a good refresher uh, there. So Vega, I think of it as, um, you know, measuring turbulence. So as the price of the stock is very volatile, it moves up and down, the Vega will tell you um, what change will happen in the price of the option. And then lastly, Rho, uh, it's not used as much. Uh, this measures how changes in wind speed, quote unquote, the interest rates can affect the plane's journey. So it tells you how much the options price might change when interest rates go up or down. So it's more relevant for long uh, term options. So you can kind of think of row as wind speed and so on. So if we kind of just review those, and then we'll jump into the formal definition. So you know, the Greeks, they help option traders understand how different factors affect an options price, much like how, you know, various instruments help a pilot understand and react to flying conditions. So this understanding enables traders to make more informed decision, you know, manage their risk uh, and then strategize uh, their trades more uh, effectively. So again, uh, for this plane analogy, Delta is your speedometer, you know, how fast the option price is expected to change when the stock moves up. A uh, gamma shows the acceleration gauge. So how quickly Delta uh, is going to change. Theta is like your fuel gauge. So you're running out of fuel as you're flying. Uh, and this is really measuring time decay. It tells you how much value an option is going to lose every day because, uh, you know, the option will eventually expire. And Vega measures sensitivity to volatility. So you can think of that as like turbulence. Uh, and then Rho uh, is uh, measuring um, how much the option's price might change when interest rates uh, go up uh, and uh, down. So that's sort of the analogy. I thought that was great. I, it really helped me kind of go through these formal definitions now and then decided to kind of jump back to that plain analogy. It, it's helped me. So um, hopefully it'll help you. And again, in the show notes, I'm going to have this, this article reference that you can kind of go and reference uh, if you need to reread it a few uh, times. Uh, okay. So let's talk the formal definitions uh, now. Uh, and I think this will help, um, help this stuff sink in a little bit uh, better. So each Greek value, uh, it's specific to each individual option contract, and it's influenced by 
things like the option strike price, the current price of their underlying asset, and the time until the expiration uh, for that option. So uh, the Greeks are specific to an option. They're not specific to a stock. So, you know, if we're talking, you know, Tesla stock, we've talked a lot about that on this podcast. You know, the options uh, are the, the Greeks will be different for every single type of option that there is on uh, Tesla. So a call option with a certain strike price, it's going to have different values for the Greeks uh, than a option with a you know lower or higher strike price or different expiration date. So keep that in mind that these relate to individual option uh, contracts. So, okay, Delta, let's go over that uh, again. So again, Delta measures an option's price sensitivity to changes in the price of the underlying stock. So for call options, a delta ranges from zero to one, indicating how much the price of the option is expected to move for a $1 change in the underlying stock. And then for puts, it's sort of a negative relationship. So the delta range is going to be negative one to zero uh, because you know as the price moves up, uh, the value of that option uh, will go down. So a delta of 0.5, for example, this means that the option's price is expected to move by 50 cents for every $1 move in the underlying stock. So that is what uh, Delta is. It measures the price sensitivity uh, of the option to changes in the stock price. So if the stock goes up by one and your Delta for your call option is 0.5, 50 cents, that means when the stock goes up by $1, the option will go up by 50 uh, cents. So for call options, as the stock price increases, we know uh, that the value of the option you know, tends to go up. And that's why uh, the delta for call options is positive. Uh, and then on the other side, uh, if the stock goes down, then the value of these uh, call options will decrease. So if the stock drops by a dollar, it goes negative uh, $1, then your delta is going to be 0.5 times negative 1 it's going to be, you know, negative 50 cents. So that's how you measure delta. Uh, and then put options, again, they gain value when the stock falls. Remember, remember, when you buy a put option, you have the right to sell at a certain uh, strike price. So you want the stock to go down uh, and then you can buy at that low price, sell at your strike price. So that's when you make money. When you buy a put option, you want the stock to go down. So uh, their delta is represented negatively it would be negative one to zero showing that the options price moves inversely to the stock price so again when the stock price goes up the value of that option is going to go down and that's why you just have a negative uh, to zero um, uh, space there for uh, delta so again call options gain value when the stock price increases and they lose value when it decreases decreases uh, proportional to their delta. That's what delta measures. And put options, again, they gain value when the stock price decreases and they lose value when it increases, again, proportional to their negative uh, delta. So that's a delta. And I think uh, thinking of that as the speedometer, again, when the stock price goes up by a dollar, the option is going to go up by the delta. And again, inversely for puts. So that is delta. So let's move on uh, to gamma now. Remember, gamma is the accelerator uh, of that delta. So gamma measures the rate of change of delta with respect to changes uh, in the price of the underlying stock. So it shows how delta is expected to change as the underlying stock price uh, changes. So here is a simple example, and we're going to go over an example uh, sort of at the end of the podcast as well with all of this stuff. But uh, if you own, say for an example, just made up a call option on a company called Fruit Tech, and let's say the delta of this option is 0.5. So again, this means that if Fruit Tech stock goes up by $1, the price of your option uh, is expected to increase by 50 cents. That's your call option. Now, suppose the gamma for this option is 0.1. So what this means is that if Fruit Tech stock price goes up by a dollar, not only does the options price increase by the delta that we said was 0.5, but then the delta is going to now increase by 0.1 because of this gamma. So after the stock price goes up by a dollar, 
your options delta is now going to be 0.6. It's going to go from 0.5 up to 0.6. It's going to add 0.1 because that's what the gamma is. So this change means if fruit tech stock goes up by another dollar, well, your options price, it doesn't just jump up by another 50 cents as it would have in the original um, first price move because Delta was 0.5, but now it's going to increase by 60 cents because there's a new uh, Delta. There's an acceleration there of gamma uh, onto that old uh, Delta number. So this shows how sensitive the option is becoming to changes in the stock price uh, as the stock price moves up. So the stock price moves up by a dollar. Delta is indicating that your options price is going to go up by 50 cents, but then the gamma now changes Delta and if it goes up by another dollar then your options price is going to go up by now 60 uh, cents in this example. So uh, in simple terms, gamma helps you understand not just how the options price will change with the stock price, but how you know the speed of this change, the delta adjusts as the stock uh, moves up. So that is gamma accelerator. Okay. And then we've got the last three here, theta, Vega and Rho. So theta, again, theta measures the sensitivity of the options price to the passage of time, referred to as time decay. So in our plane example, this was like the fuel that you're sort of running out. So it represents how much an options price is expected to decrease every day, holding all other factors constant. So options, again, they lose value as they approach their expiration date because there's less probability now. There's less time for the stock to move up or move down. Uh, so their extrinsic value, we talked about that in the last episode, um, it gets smaller and uh, decays. And you know, theta gives a measure of this rate of decline uh, each day. So when you look at the theta number, that tells you how much the option is going to decrease by um, each day holding all other things. Um, constant. And then Vega, again, Vega measures sensitivity to changes in implied volatility of the underlying stock. And again, implied volatility represents the market's expectation of future volatility. So this was a, a turbulence uh, example. So uh, Vega will indicate how much an options price is expected to change with 1% change in implied of volatility. We talked about implied volatility uh, in the previous video. And basically what this means, you know, as a stock becomes more volatile, uh, the price of the option is going to uh, change as well because there's more probability that, you know, the stock might go up for call options or might go down for put options. So there's a Vega is going to indicate that when that implied volatility goes up by 1%, what is going to be the effect on that price of that option? So that is Vega measuring the sensitivity to implied volatility of the stock. And then lastly, row, not used as much, measures an option sensitivity to interest rates uh, as they change. So it represents how much an option's price is expected to change when there's 1% change of the quote unquote risk-free interest rate. So row is uh, much more significant for longer term options as interest rates, you know, they have a greater impact on these uh, option uh, prices. So those are more formal definitions of these, you know, most common Greeks uh, used for uh, options. Now, when you're looking at, you know, where are these found, uh, you know, these kind of just sound like, okay, they're, you know, you've told me what these are, they're just these numbers, you know, where do you find them? Well, um, you know, the, these are all found in your dashboard. So uh, in the next um, episode on YouTube, what we're going to do uh, is we're going to look into them uh, within our dashboard. And we're going to see that, you know, when you bring up a list of options that you might want to purchase or sell, uh, you can click on them. Uh, and then your dashboard is going to give you the rundown of what uh, the Delta, Gamma, Vega, Rho, uh, and Theta is of that particular option. Uh, and then in the future, when you learn more about strategy, you know, you might be using these values to uh, decide on what to do in terms of, you know, buying, selling, what your overall strategy um, will be. So again, all your, your brokerage platform, where you're buying and selling options. Uh, for me, uh, for this uh, whole journey, we're going to use interactive broker. So within the dashboard there, you're going to be able to find all these values for any particular um, option that you uh, look at. So it's very easy to find. Um, you, you don't need to calculate any of these yourself. These values are all, all going to be given to you. Uh, and then you can think about them and, uh, you know, analyze them and 
and apply them to any strategy that you might have. And again, for us on this journey, we're certainly not at that stage yet. We just want to understand um, what uh, these things are. Now, one thing that I've already mentioned, uh, and it was a thought that came up to me, and I think it's worth sharing here, is that uh, it's a concept that I needed to understand. It's very easy, but that, you know, these Greeks, again, they're specific to each option, not, you know, uniformly tied to the underlying stock itself. So this, you know, individuality arises because the Greeks are influenced by factors that can differ vastly across, you know, different options, uh, even for uh, the same stock. So again, the strike price and the expiration, these are going to affect uh, these different um, values in the Greek. So options with different strike prices or expiration dates, they're going to have different sensitivities to market movements. Um, you know, Delta, vol volatility, Vega, and time decay, these are all going to be different when the strike price and expiration uh, prices are uh, different. And then, you know, market conditions, again, implied volatility. So Vega, it's going to vary for options based on how the market perceives future volatility which can be different for, again, short-term versus long-term options. So the Vega is going to be very different for an option that expires this Friday versus one that expires, you know, in a few uh, months. And then intrinsic and extrinsic value, I, these also play a role uh, in how an option's price and then its Greeks are calculated. So options that are, you know, deep in the money, which have a lot of intrinsic uh, value, they might have you know, a delta that's close to one, meaning that when the stock price goes up by one, um, the option price also goes up by almost one because, um, you know, it's very much in the money. If the, if, you know, the strike price uh, is um, for option, for a call option is below uh, the stock price now, then you're making money. So every time, you know, a dollar goes up for the stock, you know, a dollar will go up for your call option. So it's, it's, there's a high probability that that will be uh, finishing in, in the money. So uh, again, the sensitivity to price changes um, will, will be different while uh, a price, when a stock, when an option, excuse me, is in the money versus one that might be um, out of the money. So again, there's a lot of factors that uh, affect these Greeks and they're, they are pertain, they relate to the individual uh, details of each uh, specific. Uh, option. So what I think we would do to wrap this up is just run through a simple example, and we're going to talk through uh, these uh, different Greeks and what uh, these different values might do to a stock. It's just a very simple example. And we're going to just go by each one. Keep in mind um, that, you know, these things can all change at the same time. Uh, we're going to talk about them sort of individually here, but just keep in mind that, you know, in real life, um, you know, the uh, Delta Gamma, everything can kind of be uh, affected all at the same time rather than sort of spaced out. But again, for this example, we'll just kind of walk through uh, this uh, simple example. So let's pretend that we're starting with a stock that's priced at $100. And let's imagine we're looking at a call option for the stock with a strike price of $100. So it's right at the money. So the stock is trading for $100. We have the uh, call option with the strike price of $100. So we have the right to buy at $100. Uh, and then it's got one more month to expiration uh, date. And initially, we're going to assume that the price of this option is $5. And so now let's look at the Greeks and see how it might affect price. So if we just kind of do a quick review, you know, the stock price is at 100. We have an option to buy this stock at 100. So we're right at the money. The stock price and the strike price are right at the same um, time, the same value there. So this stock is at the money uh, and it's going for $5. So what this is, it, that $5 is represented by the extrinsic value. There's no intrinsic value. 100 minus 100 uh, is zero, but it's priced at $5. So there's extrinsic value because there's a month more to go. There's, you know, uh, this time. Uh, 30 days uh, to go where there's might be some probability that the stock moves up above 100 uh, and then this option becomes in the money. So that $5 is really all extrinsic value. So let's see how that $5 changes through affecting some of the Greeks. So let's first talk delta. So let's suppose that the delta on this option is 0.5. So again, this means that for every $1 increase in the stock price, the options price should increase by 50 cents. So let's see the stock price now, it increases and it goes up to $101. So the option price 
changes. The option price will change. So with a delta of 0.5, the option's new price would be $5.50. So $1 times 0.5, that's the delta, 50 cents. So we add that to the price of $5. So now our new option price is $5.50 as the stock has risen from 100 to 101 because our delta is 0.5. So then let's look at gamma. Now let's say gamma is 0.1. So this means that delta now will increase by 0.1. So for every new $1 move, uh, the delta is 0.6. So if the next move, the stock price increases by another dollar, now the stock price is at 102. What's going to happen to the option price? Well, the new option price would be six dollars and ten cents so it's going to be that 550 that we started with now we've got to add our new delta the price went up by another dollar and the new delta is 0.6 it's 0 0.5 plus the gamma of 0.1 so now we've got 0.6 plus 5.5 uh, is six dollars and ten uh, cents so again listening to this on the podcast the article is going to be below in the show notes but we'll just kind of continue talking through this so uh, we've seen how deltas affected it and then gamma has affected the delta and we've got another one dollar move up so now we're at uh, six dollars um, and ten cents so now let's talk theta well imagine that the theta for this option is 0 0.05 uh, meaning that for uh, every day the option will lose that amount due to the, the passage of time so the options price uh, in one day is now going to decrease by five cents due to time decay you know assuming no other changes so after that decay, um, the price would be approximately $6.05 from $6.10. So that day we lost five cents because that is theta affecting uh, the price of the option because you know we're losing time, the expiration date is getting closer. So we're at $6.05. Now we look at Vega. You know, let's suppose that the Vega is 0.2, indicating that the options price is going to change by 20 cents for every. 1% change in implied volatility. And let's pretend that there's a volatility increase. So the stock's implied volatility, it's increased by 1%. So what happens to the price of the option? Well, the options price is going to now increase by 20 cents, making the new option price $6.25. And now we've got row. Let's assume that it's uh, 0 0.01, showing that the options price is going to change by one cent for every one percent change in interest rates and we'll pretend that maybe interest rates increase uh, they increase by one percent so now the new option price is going to be increased by one cent so now we've got six dollars and 26 cents so in that example we've started with an option that was priced at five dollars and the stock moved up by a dollar it moved up by another dollar so we've increased it by the delta Delta changed from the gamma uh, now, and we moved into over $6.10. And then we had time decay that dropped the option price a little bit. Then volatility went up by a percent. So we knocked 20 cents onto that option price. And then the interest rates went up. So we knocked another penny on. And we've left with uh, $6.26 when we started at five. So that's just a really quick summary of how the Greeks influence and change the price of an option. Now, I uh, also keep in mind this is a simplified scenario, uh, just illustrating how each Greek can affect an option's price, showing you know their interconnected roles in this type of pricing. But again, keep in mind in the real, real life, real markets, these factors they can change simultaneously all at the same time, and the actual option you know pricing can be way more complex than just running through a couple bullet points here uh, that we have done. But I think that's a good place to wrap it up. I think that's a good introduction uh, to these options. Again, uh, you know, as you progress more and, and me personally, uh, as we move into, you know, trading for real, I will want to dive into each one of these and learn more strategy regarding them. Uh, something we don't want to do right now. Here, we just wanted to get an introduction. And I think uh, this podcast and for me going over these examples ha has really helped, um, you know, solidify uh, an understanding of what these mean and how they affect price. Uh, and then in the future, we're going to talk more about, you know, actually strategizing uh, them, what to look for, you know, how you would think about each of them when you buy or sell or what trading strategy um, you have. So again, I hope that you found uh, this useful in the show notes. You can find um, the link to this article if you want to review this. 
Uh, and again, um, if you want to join our free community on school, you can find a link to that on our website. I've got a, a section there where I list all the resources that I've personally used to learn options. And you can find that on the free community on school. And again, uh, you can download the blueprint that I'm following at stokestrades.com forward slash blueprint. So thank you so much for listening. In the next episode, I think we're going to talk about uh, how to actually buy and sell options on your dashboard. So we'll have perhaps a podcast, but we will certainly have a YouTube video about that. So consider subscribing there as well. And I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you in the next episode.